Okay, so let's uh, let's talk about VC dimension, I guess. Um, okay, so um, I mentioned this this definition last time. Uh, so um, let F be a collection of sets, and let X be a set. We say that X is shattered by F. If you have that, uh, so if I look at the the collection of A intersect X over all A which is in F, this um, gives me, well, the power set of X. So power set of X, of course, is just all the uh, subsets of X. Uh, and then we define the VC dimension. So d VC dimension is the s largest size of a set X, or car largest cardinality of X, such that X is shattered by F. Uh, I was asked, what does VC stand for? Um, so I've got the answer now. So Vapnik and Chervonenkis. Uh, okay, so let me, so this definition is, uh, is, okay, maybe I don't give another definition on the next slide, but, you know, another way of saying that F shatters X is just, you know, what we want to say is that every, for every subset of X, there is a set in F where, so for every, so X shatters F means that for every B a subset of X, there exists A in F such that A intersect X is equal to B. Okay, so this is just rewriting the definition, but in a slightly different way. <clears throat> is the definition clear? Okay, yeah. I think the rewording does help. But yeah, ra rather than just writing it in symbols like this, that the collection of A intersect X, blah, 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 equals 2 to the X. Like, this is the way to check it, right? So the way to check it is to look at a subset of X and say, is there something in F where you can, like, represent this the subset B in terms of x intersect a, where a is the thing in f. Okay, let's uh, look at an example. So, um, right, so suppose I take the f to be the collection of all intervals in the real numbers, all closed intervals, that is. Um, okay, so, so actually, like, normally we've been looking at collections which are just sets of uh, integers, but, you know, this VC dimension thing, um, you can think of it, you know, in general. So, so what's the VC dimension of the collection of all closed intervals in the reals? And I've put a poll up. Yeah. So, so remember by the definitions, what we want to find is the biggest set that's shattered by F. Right, so we've got some various different answers coming in. So it's kind of a hard concept to think about, right? Okay. Yeah. So I haven't, I'll do the solution on this slide. Uh, okay, let's think about it. So, um, so suppose I take suppose I take one like one point, right? I take the number zero. Is this shattered by f? Okay. For example, if I just take one point, yeah. So why? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I can if I take the interval, let's say negative three up to negative two, just as a random example. If I take uh, yeah, so negative 3, negative 2 intersect 0, the set containing 0. So so I'm taking, just to be clear, I'm taking the set x, which is just 0, the set, the element 0, and I'm asking, do I shatter this set? And the only subsets of x are the whole thing and the empty set. So I could take, like, the interval negative 1 up to 1, right, up to, yeah, and I intersect that with x, which is 0, and that gives me, so... Certainly, this is a proof that, so, so therefore, you know, zero, the set zero is shattered, right? So feel, feel free to keep answering the poll if you haven't answered yet. Um, but uh, yeah, so, okay, so that shows me that the VC dimension is at least one, right? Because I've got a set of size one, which is shattered. Um, I claim that it's actually at least two. Um, and how would you do that? You just take two points and show that they're shattered. So let's just take a, say I take the points five and seven. Right, and I can take an interval. So what I have to check is that there exists an interval that contains none of them, which I can just do by taking some interval over here, an interval that contains both of them, which I can do by taking everything between, let's say, four and eight. You need to show that there's an interval that contains exactly one of them, which I can also do. So I can take seven or I can take five. And so, yeah, so these four intervals give me all the different possible subsets. So the VC dimension is at least two. Yeah, and so to finish the, you know, I'm asking for exactly the uh, 
the VC dimension. So, so this shows that it's at least two, and now I have to show that it's it can't be bigger than two, right? So if I take three points, let's say x, y, and z, if you think about it, you're you're almost okay, right? You can take you can easily take an interval that contains none of them. You can yeah. So we've got this uh, this answer coming in the chat. Uh, yeah. So there's for yeah. For example, if I took uh, the numbers five, six, and seven, the thing is, yeah, if you you can you can you can almost do it, but the problem is if I wanted to take just the smallest one and the biggest one, there's no intervals that contain those two without containing the center point, like the the one in the middle, right? So an example is yeah, if I took five, six, and seven, but like I guess in we're sort of trying to show that there's no set of size three. So in anyway, in in any in generality, if I take x less than y less than z, you can't hit x and z without hitting y. But yeah, so that's good. Yeah, um, I think you can't. I think it'll if you if your collection was all the ways of taking a pair of open intervals or sorry closed intervals, whatever, it's not going to make a difference really probably. Um, yeah, I don't think you can do four because you can't get like the first one and the third one. Oh, wait, sorry. If I want to, can you do four? The first one, the last one. No, you you can probably do four, I guess. Can't you? Maybe. I think it looks like you can do four as well because I can take. As you go higher and higher, I have you know exponentially more sets to check. We have. Yeah, so you have to show that there's something in F that has an empty intersection. So this is important because, and that's just because. Remember, you have to show you have to be able to represent every subset of X, and the empty set is a subset of X. So there has to be like if I yeah. So every subset does have to have something where the intersection equals that thing. Okay, yeah. Pro you probably get stuck at five by taking like this first one, the middle one, and the last one. You're not gonna be able to get them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so with four, if you wanted to do the first and third, um, you would, and if you had you were able to use two intervals, you just put an interval around the first element and the third. So if you have one, you're only allowed to do one interval, you can't do it, but if you have two intervals, you can do it, but, oh, okay. Anyway, so these, these examples are kind of nice to think about. Um, another example, a higher dimensional example, although we should be careful how I use the word dimension because we also have this word VC dimension. Um, but yeah, what if we take boxes in two dimensions, closed uh, rectangles. So sets of the form A, like the interval A up to B, cross C up to D, where A is less than B, C is less than D. So how large of a set can we shatter? Okay. Um, yeah, so to be honest, actually, for a, for a minute, when I first thought about this, I thought that the VC dimension was going to be three, but actually it's four. Um, I guess I thought it was three because in my very weak imagination, the only way I could think about putting four points down was to put them in a s sort of rectangle, but that would be a really bad idea for this problem. Um, but yeah, so, okay, let's go through an example, like to show that it's at least four, right? If I take four points in R2 and I arrange them in this kind of diamond shape, <clears throat> so it's easy to, to take a, a, a rectangle that uses none of them, right? I just take something over here I can easily take one point at a time. I can easily take every point, like just put a big rectangle around everything. Um, also for taking three points, like by symmetry, you know, any three points are kind of the same here, right? I can take these three or any three. Um, if I wanted to take a pair of points, like there's a, a couple of cases, right? If I take say A and D, you have to do this, something like this. Um, if you take say A or like B and D, then you want to send a, rectangle through the middle. But anyway, if you think about all the cases, um, you can do them all. But if you take five points, it's gonna be impossible, okay? And the way to think about this is like, it's kind of like in the two-dimensional case, or sorry, the one-dimensional like real line, right? What we did to show that you couldn't do three was we took the smallest one and the biggest one, and we said, if you're gonna contain both of those, then you're gonna contain everything in the middle. And so that like, so you can't just contain both of those without the middle guy. Um, here you can do a similar thing except in both directions, right? You can say, I take the leftmost point, I call it Z, the rightmost point gets called W, the top is X and the bottom is Y, and there's a fifth point which we call V. But obviously the fifth point has to live somewhere in this box, right? Because we chose the 
highest, the leftmost, the rightmost, and the bottommost. Uh, so V has to be in here somewhere, but there's no way. So now if I wanted to try to get X, Y, Z, and W without getting V, it'd be impossible, right? Because whatever you do, you're gonna have to, you know, V is gonna be somewhere here. It could be right on the boundary, doesn't matter, but you're gonna always include it. Is that clear? So that was just, yeah. So I just kind of went, I went through that a little bit fast, but um, but yeah, this family F will have VC dimension four. <clears throat> uh, that's a good question. Is the VC dimension of intervals in R to the N equals equal to two to the N? I mean, we've got this pattern going two and then four. Um, I'll leave that up to you to think about, I guess. Could be, could be. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, that that's actually quite good. Yeah, if you look in, each direction, like you can take the extreme points this way and that way, this, you know, in every, uh, wait, won't that be more like two times the dimension rather than two to the power of the dimension or two times, yeah, maybe it's something like that. There's eight corners in a cube, but if I just say, I take the first coordinate, I, I maximize the first coordinate and minimize it, maximize, minimize the second, that's giving me six. That's more like the faces of the cube than the corners of the cube, yeah. I think actually it's going to be tw two times like the dimension plus one or something or whatever it is, the dimension or yeah, dimension, I guess. Okay. Well, that's actually quite cool to think about. I, I'd never thought of that. Um, yeah. But then there, there's, a, there's still the, the question of like, you know, how do you uh, show that it's at least that m amount? But I think that can also be done similarly. If you think of taking the faces of a three-dimensional cube and you put a point for each face, maybe it will work, but you know. Okay. Um, okay. So the question we're going to think about, um, or the, what I'm going to try to answer in this, uh, the rest of this class. Um, so before we were just talking about an arbitrary collection of sets, so it could have been intervals or, you know, whatever. Now let's think about a collection, which is, um, a collection of subsets of one up to N. So F is now in the power set of one up to N and what I'm, so my restriction is I say that, like the constraint is that the VC dimension of F is at most K minus one um, for some K. <clears throat> and the question is how large can F be? Okay, so this is a, an extremal problem, right? I have a constraint on the VC dimension and I wanna say subject to that constraint, I want to make my collection as big as I possibly can. And so the question is how big can it be? And as is often the case, there's a, uh, you know, I try to block this out, right? This is, uh, the answer is on, on the back of the, uh, the video, but, um, but let's think of an example. So, so one way to, I mean, in some sense, it's not obviously clear why this is a good idea of an example, but let me say, let me show something that works. So suppose I let F be the set of all a, where A is a subset of one up to N, and the cardinality of A is at most K minus one. <clears throat> so first of all, how big is F? Any thoughts? Oh, maybe I shouldn't start writing that. How big is F? Yeah, yeah, so I don't have any kind of more elegant way of doing it. Just, uh, yeah, sum up the coefficient, binomial coefficients up to K minus one. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> and now I claim that F cannot shatter a set like um, X, oops, way all right here. X, a subset of N, you know, which has size K. So why? Um, <clears throat> well, the problem is, so if, it, if I say that it, F doesn't shatter X, like to say it doesn't shatter it, I need to show that there exists a subset of X, like such that A intersect X is not equal to B for all A and F, right? So yeah, does anyone know what the set B will be? So if I just take, for example, B equals X, right? So the, the issue here is that, like, why can't I shatter X? It's because the sets in F are too small, right? Like if I take A intersect X for A in F, well, the set A has size at most K minus one. So like A intersect X, will have size at most k minus one, so it's not equal to x, right? So um, is that clear why this doesn't shatter any set of size k? Yeah, totally. Uh, exactly, yeah. If it, if we were thinking of the 
the yeah the examples we were doing like the pictures right it's like yeah the one you can't get is everything so yeah kind of like drawing a rectangle around all the points but yeah so these aren't rectangles or anything but this is like yeah the set you can't get is all of x oh yeah i see what you mean yeah it could be like taking a point at infinity in that case in that um thinking of that like box example um so b so what i so there's a question b contains k no i mean that um yeah maybe even introducing this b was a bit confusing but what i mean is here like uh so in this down here that if i look at a intersect x where a is in f the elements of f are all small they all have at most k minus one elements so certainly if i take a intersect x it's going to be small it has k minus one elements but that means it can't equal x because x has k elements right so that's all i'm trying to say there <clears throat> so the set you can't get is the biggest one when like in terms of saying in terms of the subsets of x that you can't get it's only the biggest one but you can get all the other ones okay so as it turns out this is actually the best um, construction <clears throat> for keeping the VC dimensions small. So the sauer shalloch uh, theorem says that if F is a collection of sets, a collection of subsets of one up to N, if the size of F is bigger than the sum of the first um, K minus one binomial coefficients, then F has VC dimension at least K. So note, I've got a strictly greater than sign here. So this is like, if f has one more element compared to the construction we had before, then it has, uh, you know, it has it shatters something fairly big, if that makes sense. It shatters a set of size k. Okay. Yeah. So definitely, like, if you have this restriction on f, as yeah, so like as a kind of, you know, initial thing you can say about f is that definitely, you know, f can't avoid the sets of size k or sets of size at least k. Um, but yeah, somehow we're not even going to use that, but we're still going to prove the, uh, the, I mean, we're not, we, in some sense we are using that, but like not, we're not directly going to kind of cite that fact, but yeah, this bound forces you to have a set of size at least K. And basically once you're forced to have a set of size, at least K, I'm going to, you know, we're going to prove that you have to have VC dimension, uh, at least K, which is kind of weird, but kind of cool. <clears throat> okay. So what the proof I'm going to give you is totally not this the, the original proof that so this was done, proven independently by Sauer and Shalach um maybe back in the 70s or something I'm not sure um but yeah the proof I'm going to give you right now is like not their original proof neither of their original proofs um this is a proof that came later but it's it's really a beautiful argument um it's kind of beyond clever in my so what I'm going to prove is that I'm actually going to prove a more general result that so I'm going to prove by induction on the size of f that every collection in so every collection in the power set of one up to n shatters so every collection f shatters at least size of f sets okay which is a bit bit of a weird statement but I just mean that there's size of f different sets that f shatters okay which is a more general theorem or more general or sorry a uh, kind of more general thing than what we're actually saying in this sour shalach thing. Yeah, and this this actually this actually does kind of connect to what was uh, said in the chat. So like the fact that f has at least this so bigger than this size tells you that f has to have something of size at least k. And if I can say that f shatters at least size of f sets, and the size of f is bigger than this number, then it must shatter something which has at least k elements because you know there just aren't that many uh, sets with fewer elements, right? You know, the number of sets with fewer is this, is equal to this sum. Okay, is that clear or is that? Yeah, so actually this, this comment is becoming, you know, doubly relevant. Um, <clears throat> okay, so to make it clear, yeah, so I'm, I've got a collection F. I'm trying to show that it shatters at least the cardinality of F different subsets. And they may have weird sizes, but it doesn't, you know, it's not gonna matter in some sense. Okay, let's proceed by induction on um, uh, the size of f. So the size of f is one. So this is the base case. And well, I'm gonna just say f shatters um, the empty set. That's good enough, isn't it? Um, because, you know, for any a and f, well, so f only has one element, but uh, a intersect empty set 
equals empty set. Empty set only has one subset, it's itself. So, so that should work, right? Um, so F does shatter at least one set because it shatters that one, the empty set. Sometimes empty set things get a bit confusing, but uh, hopefully that's okay. Um, okay, so then if that's okay with everybody, let's think about when F has at least two elements. The power set of the empty set is almost the empty set, but it's not, it's not quite the empty set. The power set of the empty set is the set that contains the empty set. So, yeah. And so if I was to take, yeah, A intersect empty set such that A is in F, um, because, so I actually need F to have one element for this to be true, right? But this does equal the set containing the empty set. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> okay, so now F is at least two, the size of F is at least two. I'm just going to say, okay, I'm just going to define right now the set of things that are shattered. So S, like kind of curly S, is the set of all X, or the collection of all X, a subset of one up to N, such that X is shattered by F. And so like basically our goal comes down to proving that the size of S is at least the size of F. This is just notation. <clears throat> okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Okay, what do we do? I mean, this this is kind of a, a nice, I mean, inductive. Like, what do you do when you do induction, right? We want to sort of take f, reduce it down to to smaller, to some smaller collections, apply the inductive hypothesis, and then put it all together, right? So, uh, so this is how we're going to do it here. Um, but so here, here's how we kind of break down f into two smaller collections. So let f1, so not curly f, but regular f1, and f2 be two different sets in F. And like F and F, F1 and F2 are different sets, right? So um, without loss of generality, we can assume that there's a set, there's a point in F1 that is not in F2, right? Because I mean, if you think about F1 and F2, they might look like this, right? In which case I pick a point from here, or they might look like this with F1, with F2 nested inside of F1, that could happen. And then I would just pick a point here, um, so by without loss of generality, like just by, you know, if I wanted to, I could change which one is F1 and which one is F2. Um, I can always assume this. So I let F X be a point in F1, but not F2. Um, this is going to be handy in a second. Um, so it might seem a bit weird. Like, why don't I just use the element N or something? That's like, for example, that's what we did in the harris kleitman inequality and stuff. Like we did induction where we specify the element N. Um, but yeah, it's it's useful to pick x in this way, um, and then I'm going to take f1 to be the set of all, um, let's say a and f, such that x is in a, and f2 to be the set of all a and f, such that um, x is not in a. And of course, this partitions f. Here's the thing: like, if you want to apply induction, apply induction. Like, if you take your original collection and you partition it into two halves or two parts. If one of the parts is empty, then you haven't done anything, right? You you can't apply induction on the, the one that's not empty because it's the same collection you had before. So the point of choosing X in this way is so that both of these collections are non-empty. Um, and in particular, like the first one, like the first collection has the, the set F1, so it's not empty. F1 is in there. And this one has F2. F2 is in here. Sorry, F2. Okay, so that's just to make sure, you know, that we... Um, actually do reduce the size of the collection so we can apply induction, right? Is that clear? So we, yeah. And remember, we're, we're doing induction on, so remember, it's not induction on N or anything like that. It is induction on the size of F, right? That's kind of, that's why we need these things to get smaller than F. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's not a thing I drew, but that, that could happen too. Yeah, totally. Yeah, in which case, it's even easier to pick a point. Oh, yeah. Except, okay, it's not quite easy. Okay, if one of them is the empty set, I would just let F1 be the non-empty one and pick a point from there. So, yeah, in any case, I can always choose F1 and F2 such that there's a point in F1, not F2. But yeah, that's a good point. Disjoint is also a possibility. Any other questions? <clears throat> okay, so here's an observation. I claim that if X is a set, a subset of 1 up to N, which contains little x, Remember how little x was chosen and how f1 and f2 were defined. It's all up above. Um, I claim that f1 cannot shatter capital X. And why? Well, it's because of the element x, right? 
So in particular, you can't get the empty set. If I take, so if I take A intersect X for A in F1, well, A contains the, the element X, little x, right? So X is in here. X is inside of A. X is also inside of B, you know, it's also in, in X by assumption, right? So, so you can't get the empty set because it's always going to include the, the element X, little x. Yep, exactly. So, yeah, so again, if x, uh, if little x is in x, then yeah, the, the thing is that a intersect x, well, x is not in, little x is not in here. So this intersection will never include little x, um, but, but big x does include little x. So yeah, so getting a intersect x equals x is impossible for um, a in f2. Yep, that's exactly right. Okay, so you're never gonna, so if I look at f1 or f2, they never shatter anything that has x. So that that's an important point that's gonna come back in a second. Okay, so let's suppose I let, for i equal to one or two, we let si be the things, the collection of sets that are shattered by fi. So this is just the, similar to the definition of curly s before, right? S, curly s was the things that are shattered by f. Curly si is the things shattered by fi. And by induction, we can say that this has, the size of this is at least the size of fi. Yeah, script, sorry, yeah. The, the non-script fi is a set. The, yeah, the non-script f1, let's say, is a subset of one up to n, which I used in the definition of the script fi's. Yeah, maybe I should try to keep my letters kind of more distinct, but okay. Um, so now, uh, Here's the thing, like one thing I can say is for sure that, you know, F shatters everything in S1 and F shatters everything in S2 because, you know, because for example, like F1 is contained in F. So every set, like if, if I, if F1 shatters a set X, all the sets I use to shatter it are also present in F, right? So, so certainly I have this inclusion here that the things, if I can shatter it with F1, or I can shatter it with F2, I can shatter it with F because F has all, you know, because uh, F is the union of F1 and F2, which looks good, right? That looks good because, you know, it's, uh, I mean, I would be really happy if we could just say, uh, you know, be, the things that are shattered by F is now at least this, right? I'd be super happy, but that's not how inclusion exclusion works, right? You've also got minus the things in the intersection. Uh, well, actually, it's it's still. Hmm. I think. Well, the at this point, actually, the partition thing is not important. It's just really the fact that f one is a subset of f because, like, suppose I have let's say x in s one. Like, yeah, if I look at all the things that are in f one that I use to shatter x, I could just use the same things and show that f shatters x in some sense. Ah, but the thing is, if you look at the collection, like, certainly this is always going to be you know, such that A is an F, it's always going to be a subset of the power set because it's always going to give you a subset of X. So actually it can never, it can never give you extra stuff. It can give you this, it can give you the same sets many times with, with high multiplicity, but yeah, no problem. Okay. So like this inclusion here looks like good news, right? Cause I, I would love to just say, oh, the union of two sets is the sum of their sizes, but that's not true, right? The union of two sets, S1 and S2, the size of the union is the sum of their sizes minus the size of the intersection. So I need to find some more sets that get shattered, right? Because this isn't this is not good enough. Is that clear? That we're kind of missing this many shattered sets. But now this observation from the previous slide is going to come to the rescue. So here's the thing: F1 and F2 were really bad at shattering sets that contain this special element little x. You know, they were unable to do it. Um, but that's not true about f. So, so let me kind of try to explain that. As So this is the last, uh, well, okay, this is basically the last thing. So suppose that x is shattered by both f1 and f2. So here I'm looking at a set x, which is in this intersection. Um, and now I take the set. So if x is in s1 intersect s2, it doesn't contain little x because Remember, F1 and F2 can't shatter any such set. If you know if you contain little x, then F1 and F2 can't do it. So I define y to be x union little x. 
which so now that's a, sh a set that these guys can't shatter but i claim that f can shatter that shatter it um and how do i know that well if i just look at the y intersect a overall a in f1 that's going to give me so if i did this with x instead of y that would give me all the subsets of x um but the fact that i've got this little x added on what this is going to give me is all the subsets of y that contain x because remember um, by definition of a1 so x is in a for all uh, a in f1 and now if i do the same thing with f2 that's going to give me all the subsets of y that don't contain x that's because x is not in a like for all a in f2 and because both f1 and f2 shatter x so actually this shows that y is shattered by f okay and y is not in the union of s1 interest or union of s1 and s2 okay so this is a genuine new um, thing that we've shattered that we haven't counted earlier okay because it contains the element x that's the the special thing and again this is because f1 and f2 the script f1 and script f2 are unable to shatter anything that contains x little x so grand finale um, so what am I saying here? The size of S. So that's the things shattered by F. Number of things shattered by F, by script F. Um, we already observed that everything in here, so everything, uh, so this is the things shattered by F1 or F2. And this, is the, and this is the things of the form X union X. So, so like this is what I'm, I'm counting here. Where x is in, which is where x is shattered by both of them, and these are all like, so every so the things in f s contains all of these things, um, and yeah, these are all distinct because you know these things don't contain any set that contains x, uh, and so that just equals s one plus s two, which is the size of f one plus the size of f two, which is equal to f because it's a partitioning.